Welcome to the Sounds of Chicago podcast, brought to you by the Chicago Music Guide. Hello, my name's Mark, and this is a podcast dedicated to the vibrant local Chicago music scene. Chicago has a very storied history when it comes to music. We hope to talk to and capture the feeling of the thriving local scene. Today, we will be talking to two artists that are a very unique duo that bring a good time party music and darkness to their performances. Two individual solo artists that found they needed to form a league of their own. Eric Stafford Dintz and Eric Peter Schwartz, together known as the League of Eric's. Hi guys, how you doing? Hey, Hello. thanks, thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Nice to be here. Yeah, it's good to see you. Um, so, I gotta start out with a couple of easy questions, a couple of softballs. How did you start playing guitar? Where, where did the, you start? Uh, I started ago. quite a long time ago. Um, as so many people you see, performers on stage, there was a certain point where I didn't even distinguish what kinds of music was just like, they're up there playing guitars, that's cool. Mm -hmm. And then you get the guitar and you start to appreciate the instrument and then the influences start coming in. That would, For me that would have been in the 70s. Okay, that's well, how long ago I'm talking. Who did you see that was cool? Then? I, as much as I'm not, they're not one of my favorites, you know, I grew up when the Beatles were still around, so it's like that's very cool to start off with. Um, get into the 70s then we started seeing some of the harder rock stuff like Kiss made a big impression mm -hmm. when they first came along and then just I went from there to uh, the uh, UFO Thin Lizzy uh, punk rock a lot of the, you know they were all guitar driven music that, that influenced me mm -hmm. so and um, what was it about Kiss that, that really drew you that on? was a, a, a one two punch um, I saw them before the, when their first album came out, they were on, on, on a, a Friday Friday night show, and never heard of them. They come out, and I was I am still a big comic book fan. Okay. So that was right there, the best of both worlds. Yeah. They're playing music that's rocking, and they look like they stepped out of a comic book. Right. So didn't they actually even make a comic? They yeah, did. They it, it, it was much later on, but you know, I, I, they probably had that influence initially. But you know. And to be fair, I liked the music too. It wasn't just the image was great, but you know, it's like everything I wanted at that time. And I, I think I remember uh, this might be apocryphal, but the the comic book that they made, I think that they put their own blood in the end. Yeah, the that, story. That, that was, yeah, that, I think, and I think I've got that comic somewhere. Oh, place. cool. It was, it was done on Marvel. Did it? Of course. Yeah, they did course. two two special edition comics. Yeah. Yeah. Is, it, is it possible to see Gene Simmons in the MCU then? <laughs> well, he does technically exist in the MCU, I would yes. imagine. And, and but I, they'd have to pay him more than they yeah, want to, I'm sure. There, there's some licensing that uh, I think Marvel's not going to cough no, up for. Not, not even the big mouse is going to pay for no. that. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I, I don't think we'll see Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park on Disney Plus anytime no, soon. No. I, don't, I don't think so. <laughs> So that would make Kiss Disney princesses then, if that uh, was the case. Ace, Ace for sure. Yeah. Ace for sure. So, all right, well, let's turn it over to Eric. Um, I started uh, playing guitar in... Uh, Excuse me. Bless you. I started playing guitar in uh, 1982. Uh, I was taught by a nun who had great legs. Um, mm -hmm. And that, that sounds bad, but she was yeah. the first nun I ever saw that wore a knee length. Okay. And she was probably younger, and actually, it was a nun I had a crush on, which sort of informed the rest of my life. Was that right. part of the musical influence? Too? No, no, the musical influence all came from, you know, my, my dad used to, uh, my mom worked evenings, so my father, while he was doing up the dishes or whatever, would put on the, back when you could put a stack of 45s on right. the, the player, he would just right. put on a stack, right. the, the original mixtape, yeah. and they would drop, and I would sit in a... Uh, uh, like uh, we had a bar in the in our family room, so I would sit on a bar stool in front of the stereo, listening to the music, playing my lightsaber, <laughs> my, my plastic <laughs> lightsaber. Um, so I always wanted to play guitar, and uh, my folks liked really uncool music, but song driven music. So um, the stuff I was listening to is their their favorite stuff from like the fifties and sixties, and then like the really uncool stuff like John Denver and, and things like that that, you know, inform songs and songwriting for me. And then I found Kiss as was like the first band I found that was like my own. And then when I had the option to, because uh, I was going to Catholic school and they offered free guitar classes uh, to then play uh, in front of, uh, in front of, uh, in, in church. They, they would do a folk mass at church with a, with a bunch of the kids playing guitar. So, I started learning and was performing in front of audiences within like three weeks. They taught me like four chords, and go. I was off playing. 
the music of Reverend Carrie Landry, <laughs> wow. who, uh, uh, you know, at church. Also a big influence in your life. Yeah, right? and then uh, then I went electric when I saw Back to the Future, because okay. I was like, that. the Johnny B. Good scene was like, I have got to get an electric guitar. It was your Dylan moment. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Electric. yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so, so then what was your first band experience then? Uh, I'll let you feel that one. I didn't get into a band until I was in my first first couple of years of college. Okay. And I was a, a good friend of mine said, hey, I'm putting this band together. You want to play guitar in it? And I like I had been dying to be in a band. I never was in a band in high school at all. Um, I was too shy. And also, to be fair, I wasn't that good either. Um, so I got into this band. And besides being the first band that I ever got to perform with, it's also a band that helped me get into the Rolling Stones because I wasn't a Rolling Stones fan, but all they were doing was Rolling Stones covers. So I'm learning these songs going, hey, these are pretty neat. You were in the Rolling Stones? That's cool. <laughs> yeah. So the first show we did was a, a gong show slash talent okay. show, and we won. Mm. And this was like the coolest, you know, we did like four songs. And it was the best experience I'd ever had in my life at that point. I'm like, I'm playing music in front of people, and people are liking it. Yes. I mean, granted, it's a it's half-assed Rolling Stone covers, but, but it's it was feedback. That, that was the yeah, first yeah. thing. And surprisingly, I didn't last in that band, but it, that's that sowed the seeds, and mm -hmm. I went from there. And then what was the next band then? The next band was a, we were just talking about it on the, on the drive yeah. over here, yeah. a I'm going to put in parentheses, New Wave Band, because this would have been about right. 1980. Sure. It was really just a cover band, but we were doing New Wave songs. Mm. And that was a learning experience, mm. too. Yeah, it's a pretty big uh, blanket term, New Wave, at the time. Yeah, back you know back then, that it was that was supposedly edgy. It's like, like Alternative yeah. was when it first came around. So like, And <laughs> it's funny, because the person who was in charge of this band... She was only interested in. She was still thinking in terms of like regular cover bands. So we're doing these things. All of a sudden, we we're, we're doing new wave things. She was like, "Let's learn a super tramp song." I'm like, uh, "Okay." That was sort of the super idiot. tramp is the death of new wave. <laughs> <laughs> it was for that. Band. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So well, what kind of new wave songs were you doing? Uh, we I remember because it was still fairly recent. We did uh, Life During Wartime. Oh, wow. We did Lust for Life. Uh, okay. Mickey yeah. Pop. Um, we did Turning Japanese okay. by The Vapors. Yeah. Uh, Ultravox. I, I, I just bought an album by them, and uh, we did something from the Vienna album called New Europeans. Okay. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah, uh, 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 the Ramones, because I was a big Ramones fan, mm -hmm. so we did um, I Just Want to Have Something to Do, which is wow. uh, from the Road to Ruin album. Also, the uh, Rock and Roll High School movie, which was oh, one of my favorites. Right. So we were doing that, and like I said, because some of the people in there were still in the mindset of, oh, well, we have to play these things. Oh, like, we started doing Super Tramp. We right. did a heart song, which was like, <laughs> wow. I, like that was the beginning and the end for the band. Yeah. Right. Sure. Wait, I got to know which Super Tramp song you guys played. Dreamer. Because wow. we, we had a keyboard player, and she was really good. Okay. So, so she kept using it. Like, well, I have to show, be able to show people that I can really play. So she thought, uh, yeah. a lot of keyboards in New Wave that you yeah, can yeah, yeah, but she, uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, it, like I said, it, it, this is this is the the ultimate in. We're putting a band together, and we have no idea what we're talking about. Yeah, right. Okay. And then every the element experience. sort of comes in, and yeah, then it ends up. Right. We did. We, I think we did some Bowie too, because uh, but that that was like a good middle ground. Was, right. You could still throw it as new wave, but it was also you know established. Right. <laughs> that is sort of the downside of, of when you start a band picking the genre of the band as like even before you perform. Like mm -hmm. hey, when you're when you start building it, you're saying we're gonna be this right. because it takes you longer to find your voice sometimes, you know. Um, but then again, you know, you wanna entice the musicians who want to audition, but it, it can be a downfall. Well, I, was, I was just watching an interview with REM where mm -hmm. they were saying Oh that latest one that Yeah, the latest one they just did and they said we didn't really find our voice for about six months, sure. you know. They were just doing like covers of things, right. and then they, they found their voice. So super tramp covers, probably. right? All super <laughs> tramp. In, in a way, that's actually true of us as well. When we first started doing stuff, that we, you know, there have been a lot of songs that we sort of started off doing that we yeah. don't do anymore. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just like I, I know there was one we used to do one of Eric's, and it's a really good song. But it was a certain point we just realized it doesn't fit us anymore. Yeah, and yeah. just kind of grow out of it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. We, I hate to say it because it's still a good song. It's just it didn't fit what we were doing. Yeah, right. the, 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 we've. 
we've worked to to build an identity for mm-hmm. the league. Like there's, a, it's an attitude. It's a, right. it's a thing. And oh, like yeah. he'll write a song or I'll write a song, and we'll know even before we bring it to the other person if it's a League of Eric song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. um, too much romance, not in the League of Eric song. Okay. <laughs> you know. So. Well, I mean, okay, so we've got your your basis established, and then you, um, so we're starting to get towards where you guys are a unit. So in twenty seventeen, yeah. how 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 did the magic happen? How well, we actually happen? we actually met prior to that. We uh, uh, we have a mutual friend, uh, a guy named James Abud, who used to perform in the area as a Buddha bard, and uh, okay. he uh, he was hosting. Uh, they would have. Uh, and they did an open mic at the Chicago Bagel Authority. Yeah. And uh, I forget which one. Surprisingly, it was, it was the one on it was the one on Bellman. Surprisingly, a actually a good place to have an open yeah. mic. <laughs> the, 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 you know, they had a great the the, bake, the food was good, but they had a good space for it. Yeah. It was a, a nice stage, so it was a really it was a good place to perform. And he was really good friends with James. They were in a couple of bands together. Yeah. And James and I had gotten to know each other. He invi- he was the featured open mic performer, so he would do like a. You know, he would do a bunch of songs, and then they bring up a couple of the open mic people and things like that. Yeah. And he invited me to come out and play. So I, it was the first time I ever met Eric, and I didn't really officially meet him during that, but I fell in love with his guitar case because his guitar case was completely right. covered with parking meter stickers <laughs> from Chicago from like every gig he'd done. Okay, that's an and, odd thing. And uh, I, I met him briefly there, and then. It was just sort of, and then he came to a show I did at Kiss the Sky out here in Batavia, yeah. the record store out in Batavia. I, I live in Avery Hills in Norris. I was like, well, I should go do that. Yeah, and it just right. it just sort of, uh, eventually, he and I started playing together uh, because we had done, like, some round-robin shows, and then I was doing a show at a place where there was never an audience, and it was like an early, it was like an early evening, and there was no, and I said, you want to just come do this show with me, and we'll just take turns playing songs to entertain ourselves, because there's never an audience. Yeah. And we started doing that, and then it was like, uh, you want to play on this song of mine? You want to yeah. play on this song of mine? And it just sort of grew, and then we started going to open mics together, and it, it yeah. just it really grew organically. So when I say we started, the League of Eric's officially started playing together in 2017. Okay. It was like, that was when we became the League of uh, Eric's yeah. as a okay. thing. And then in 2021 is when we sort of both just sort of chucked out the solo stuff and said, we're just going to go all in on all League of Eric's. Yeah. Okay. yeah there, there was, it's been interesting because I think at one time we were probably both still very protective and proud of our solo stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and I know within the last year and a half, it doesn't have the same charm for me. Yeah. Same now, it's especially true because he had to bow out of a gig due to an injury. Right. And so I had to go do a solo thing. And a year ago today, by the way. It was a year ago today. Wow. Yeah, and it right. was and I get up there and do the solo thing and it was miserable. I was like, okay, this is not as much fun. Right. I'm not connecting with the audience as well. Yeah, it was it's pretty much like a big nit. Why why am I you know, this isn't working. Yeah, we, right. we, we both started catching on pretty quickly that there was more it was more interesting. More as a Absolutely right. The, people people well, paid more right. attention to us and um and there was, you know, my solo stuff was sort of it was good. It was fine. People liked it, but I don't think it was terribly memorable. And so, but people remembered when we were the league. So we just sort of said, "I'm not gonna," because he just had pneumonia about a month about yeah. a month ago. Wow. So I had to take four of our gigs, three of our gigs, okay. and do them solo. And I hated it. Yeah. Like I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> I, I, so besides being sick, it's like I, I hated missing shows, especially because one of them was in Madison. I've been dying for us to play at Madison. Right. And I couldn't do it, so... I'm, well, granted, they had Destroy All Monsters on that night, so it was okay, so I'm sitting at home watching TV. <laughs> That's true. But... I we're, was going, we're going back to Madison in October, though. We're yeah, going yeah, back. Yeah. But it was it was killing me not to do the show. I sure. You know, in, in a way, I wonder if doing the Robert Johnson thing is what... Because I had been sick, and I was, and I was feeling better, and because I, I really wanted to get healthy. We were, we were playing in a Robert Johnson tribute in Chicago, oh, wow. and I was hell-bent that we were going to do that. And but by the end of the week, I was sick again. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I've had pneumonia. It's no fun. Oh. <laughs> I've never been that sick in my entire life. Oh, wow. Yeah, you didn't end up in the hospital though, or no? Well, thank goodness. No. Close. I have a feeling though. But you, yeah. If if that well, okay, we're gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. The antibiotics that, sh- that I got the second time around hadn't helped. Yeah, probably. Welcome to Diseases of Chicago, yeah. a production. Oh, I, I remember uh, our ailments and aches and yeah. pains. Oh my head. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well. Okay, so you wrote songs solo. So, uh, are you writing songs together now? Is that what? Um, it's or? it. Yes, it. 
Sort of. We we there's there's a couple songs we've actually written to like we sat down and wrote together. A couple oh, of them. Yeah. Like for but, example, which ones? Uh, we well, sat down. Giant and, monsters. Giant sure. monsters. Well, okay. that one I I brought in oh, and then true. we fixed it together. The the one we sat down and wrote together is called On a Friday Night. Like we actually sat in a room and wrote that song out yeah, at those the same time. Wrote out the lyrics. Wrote but out the... Uh, it it's more. I mean, it, it is more like um, I always equate it to oddly uh, the way the Indigo Girls work, which is okay. they write separately right. and then they bring it together and they work on the arrangements together. Sure. Or, you know, Lennon McCartney did right. the same thing well, or whatever. Lots of people do that. But that's how we work. Th- th- more than just sneaking, like, like um, a, a recent song that we're doing, it's called Destroy All Monsters that, mm-hmm. I, that I wrote. Eric had some particular ideas that have changed the song to way it, where it is. So, it's, mm-hmm. I mean, he's definitely co-wrote the song Granted, I had the initial things, but so it, it, I think we get a little bit of that. Okay. Yeah, and I like I brought in this song Kroger Bab. Um, oh, James and, was in on and, that. And, and James Abood was in on that. But you also, like, like I there was parts of that where I just, I couldn't get, I knew what I wanted, and he helped me find it. So, right. you know, it's, yeah. and and then we play them almost as soon as we can because these fresh, songs, right. work, work, work them out on, on the road. Like, that's, mm-hmm. that's what yeah. we do is, you know, because... Even songs that we've recorded on our EPs or, or whatever have changed already. Like since then, like they're still oh, yeah. they're already not the same. Even even something like Giant Monsters that we you know spent time yeah. recorded put out, it's it's altered a little bit since yeah, we, yeah, you, you know find, just uh, by being on the road, right? Or you, you find okay, well this would work a little better, or yeah. you actually oh make a mistake and oh but this is better than what right, I was doing. Exactly. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, this is cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and I, I don't have that luxury. I end up going to as many open mic nights as I can. Yeah, new songs and just that's the best. That's the best way to work. I mean, you, you've got your your own personal as a writer, right? Yeah. And then what's nice about working as a duo is that he can say, oh, that, I don't know, let's try that up the you know up the tempo of this part." Right. We the song Giant Monsters. We tried. I tried desperately <laughs> to write a bridge for it. Yeah. Like yeah. for ages. Well, in fact, well, I have we, video we, footage we, we, of we, the bridge. We, we, we were debating. Okay, how's the bridge going to go? How's the bridge? Did we? Was and I, we just said, we don't need to do a bridge. Yeah, I think I think we both hated it. I was yeah. I was so convinced because the song's about Godzilla and all these things. Because we have a shared love of yeah, obviously yeah, of, of kaiju Guilty. movies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I thought let's have a bridge about destroying a bridge. You know, I was like, this is really clever. There you go. And we, I tried, I tried, I tried. And I'm sure he was the one who was like, this is really not working. Well, so we just we cut it at the no bridge. The, the, no bridge. The other thing was how we the, the arrangement that is pretty much what we have today was almost an afterthought because it was we were, like yeah. first it was gonna be kind of punky or mm-hmm. it's gonna be this way and then we just started doing this folkier version of yeah, it. Yeah it's kind of a, we, we kind of put it, it as a lounge thing yeah. as a as a joke. I wrote it to be like a like a like a surf like a psycho surf okay. song. And then time one time we sat down and just played it and just as a joke started playing it all loungy mm-hmm. and that's the one that stuck. We both went I don't know. That's, yeah. that's pretty good. So that's, I mean, as, as far as collaborating, it's a constant collaboration, yeah. but the, the seeds of the songs generally right. come from us by ourselves. So in Destroy Our Monsters, you wrote while you were with pneumonia or while you were watching the movie? Um, actually, I'd written it a little bit before. Okay. Um, it was literally shown on TV. It's it's probably my one of my favorite. It's close to being my favorite um, of that genre. And I just started coming up with the lines about it. And it was also it's also sort of a tongue in cheek um, statement of intent about like we're monsters that are going to be a world <laughs> implying that we as a band are going to knock down cities and things like that too. Yes. Yeah. So um, I wrote the basics for it fairly quickly, and then I brought it in, and like Eric definitely helped me get because we we've got the the, the chorus is is a little mm-hmm. bit more pronounced, which right it's kind of a little more sing along, okay. and just in general um, the it's now a better fit thanks to Eric's yeah. uh, influence. We we both have a tendency to tell the other when we bring in a song, he'll say to me or I'll say to him, and we wind up simplifying the things that we both bring in yeah. because we both, you know, want to you, you want to show off your chops a little bit and like write a couple of chords in or or, yeah. or do like a chord change, you know, to and then we'll both be like, you know, let's just hold, you know, like, or Masferatu Blues. I kept trying to just do this blues thing. He's like, let's hold that B7 a little longer. Yeah. Yeah. Really interesting talk for people who don't play guitar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, I was, well, that'll segue to talking about Graveyard Party. Oh, yeah. I so, uh, wanted to ask you about a couple of songs on it, and uh, Masferatu Blues, tell, tell me about it. Uh, it's my. Where did it, where did it come from? It's and, my favorite uh, vampire movie. It's my favorite right. Dracula film. It's a little over 100 years old. Uh, yeah. Silent... Um, Max Schreck plays, mm-hmm. uh, and, uh, 
Um, and I just, it's a, I mean, it's it's such a simple song. It's definitely a, kind of a, right. one of the things he brought to that was uh, we slowed it down and he started playing kind of a swampy mm -hmm. kind of feel to yeah, it. Yeah, it has a little bit of a Creedence feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, absolutely. It, 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 it just, it's similar. It's definitely the creeds, but it's basically just it's an E seventh chord. Right. Yeah. And if I, when, my, when my tremolo pedal is working, it's really good. Um, <laughs> uh, I, if I remember correctly, you, you wanted me to do the vocal. I did. I, that was when I said I said I think I want you to write this because when we started the league and suddenly I, we had this identity that I was writing toward. It gave me a focus. So I, I was like, let's focus on monsters and and dark stories and things right. like that. And I immediately went to Nosferatu. And it was uh and actually we mentioned Nosferatu in two songs live now. Yeah, like I mean he, he gets he gets a mention. Yeah, name checked. Um, yeah, exactly. And it, it just it came out of that. It came out of uh, it just came out of um, it was a simple story to tell because it's a simple story. Yeah. And uh, it just it kind of clicked and he liked it but he thought I should sing it. Right. And uh, and so, that's just how it's got the point it's like he had a better take, and, and what's really good is that as the songs evolved, it's become a good vocal showcase for him. It's mm. one of it's one of the highlights of the set in terms of that, right? You know, and um, I'm really happy about that part of it. And also, what's uh, and also as a sidebar, as as a as the song is winding down, uh, Eric will throw some other lyrical things. Yeah. Just mm. the, like he was, he was doing Sundown by Gordon Lightfoot, which fit surprisingly well <laughs> yeah. with that. And, and then occasionally and other ones, that, just yeah. for grins. Yeah, I started doing Sundown, because Sundown thematically fits yeah, uh, right. you know, a vampire Absolutely. story. And then every once in a while, I'll, I'll just, to surprise him or to make him chuckle, I'll throw in like, yummy, yummy, yummy. <laughs> or, uh, what did I throw in? The, the old man down the road. I've done the old man yeah, down yeah. the road. Uh, yeah, actually, that caused, twice. that caused a drunk at Montrose Saloon to start yelling he wanted to hear center field, uh, and, and and then he just he just when we said we don't we don't really play any of that, he shifted gears and just started yelling covers. I want to hear covers, and we're like we don't you know we don't do covers. We do, we do we do we do like a handful of covers like yeah. at best. So yeah, I, I was playing in Plainfield on uh, on Friday, and a woman was really enjoying everything. Oh, I like everything you do. Can you play Don't Stop Leaving? I said, I don't know. I said, I don't know that one. Cold shoulder, done with. Yeah, the yeah, and yeah. Like, that's that's one of the one of the twenty songs I just played that you yeah. liked, and I'm doing covers. Yeah, yeah. I did a solo yeah. show one time, and I, uh, if you guys check out the music, I don't sound like Aaron Neville, okay. uh, but at some point after this guy had been listening to me for about forty five minutes, he goes, "Do you know any Neville Brothers?" And I'm like, "Have you been listening to me?" <laughs> I I don't. Number one and two. I'm like, I don't know much, okay. but I know I don't know any Neville songs. So, yeah. so why don't we uh, check out a little bit of Nosferatu Blues? There we go. And uh, give it a listen, and we'll come back on the other side. We'll talk a little more about some of the other songs on, on uh, Graveyard Party. Cool. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
I saw you guys play at Porch Fest. I was really your your tremolo pedal did work that day. Oh, worked, yeah. and it worked very well. So I, he talks about that being a showcase for me. That he blows people away with his mm -hmm. soloing on that. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was outstanding. Yeah, it's it, it, it's one of those songs that it's a happy surprise how much people dig it. You know, it's like you're like, oh, I'll play that tune. It goes well. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. I, I always kind of try to like keep an ear out to see like, oh, look, yeah, there was. Well, let me ask you about another song in there. Um, I was uh, checking through the songs today on, on Graveyard Party and Toast, and uh, Pete, where did that come from? Because it's really dark. It, it's a very, it is a very dark song. Um, that the, came it, together it, it, surprisingly quickly. It came together very quickly. Um, I, I lie live. If you guys say spoilers, I lie and tell some crazy story about you know how I wrote it. Truth is. I was sitting around one day and I just had a dark thought. I'm like, do morticians ever like get a body that they think is hot? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you can't turn off what you think is attractive. Right. So if, if suddenly someone comes in and I'm like, that's a terrible, awful thing, I should write a song about it. <laughs> so that's what it's about. It, Pete is a song about uh, a corridor who likes his job loves his job likes but every little too much little too much and every once in a while he gets somebody comes in that he thinks as the chorus says it's too bad you're dead because we could be lovers <laughs> and he never does it like in, in the right. song I specify he never crosses the line but yeah it goes it goes dark and the strange thing and it's a very um well it's a dark sounding song and we use dark chords in it and things like that but it's surprisingly upbeat and when we recorded it, Dins uh, sent his 12 string for the solo, sent his 12 string yeah. through an effects pedal mm -hmm. and just got the greatest sort of psychedelic right. yeah. sound on it. And uh, I am always amazed how many women, especially, this is the weirdest part, how many women come up and say, I really like that song about the, more, about the corner. We, we were playing in Rockford on Friday. Yeah, and this was was it in the second set? So and there was a couple, and I'm gonna say middle age or something. You know, we start playing this song, and they both they uh, listen to the lyrics, and they both start smiling. I mean, they're seeing the humor in it. I'm just like, okay, that works. I mean, it's it's a and, dark it's a dark comedy song. Yeah, right? I mean, I, I wouldn't call it a comedy song, but it's it's got that sort of like dark humor to it. And yeah. and. and, and you know, no one's ever been offended by it. We've got people who come hey, up, if they I really like that song, but no one's ever said, ah, oh, although, that's, you. although that's, yeah. that's not the case with some of our songs, because we did have a gentleman not like what we were singing about, uh, and we played, it all culminated in, we did a cover of Nick Cave's Up Jump the Devil, okay. which is, he, he brought to the table, and it's, it's so, it. we do it so dark, and so... And it's a great dark song about the devil. Mm -hmm. And this guy got up, turned to, I, I found out later because he talked to a friend of mine. He said, well, listen, I think Archangel Michael is coming back. We're all doomed. And <laughs> left, like did not come back, like walked away from us. So we're like, okay. And, and so when we say good time party darkness, that's what we're talking about is we, we're talking about, you know, the kind of the kind of darkness, the kind of dark material that makes you go, <laughs> you know, like when you chuckle at a kill in a horror movie, like when when there's a really good kill in a, mur a horror movie, or when Godzilla knocks down a building and you're like, oh, that's so cool. That's the kind of good time party darkness we're talking about. Yeah. Well, it, it's interesting to me when when I saw you guys play live is that it's you guys are have a sense of humor about what you're doing, but it's not a comedy act. No, it's not. Not yeah. at all. We get tenacious. Sometimes, 
I, we, I think we worry about that, that people are going to, like the Tenacious D thing, nothing but respect for them, right. but I mean, the fact that they're actually good musically, mm -hmm. but people just think of them in a comedic sense, and right. I, you know, I want people to, I, I like a sense of humor, but I don't want people to think yeah. that's all and, we're about. And, and I, I, th I think a lot of that also comes, comes from the fact that Tenacious D, I mean, they lean into the comedy, but part yeah. of the comedy is their overblown identity, right. like right. the way they present themselves right. as a, and um, so we do get that. I don't always see it because we don't. There's plenty of songs we do that are not that don't even have a, a twinkle in their eye. They're just flat out dark. Right. And others that are really yeah. fun, like a song like a song like the, the theme song or the title track, Graveyard Party. Mm -hmm. People dance to that, and right. it's it's about partying in a graveyard, being dead, and yeah. you know, have, dancing around in a graveyard. And but people dance to it, so we 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 try to make. We, the one thing we have to sell venues on to get booked is we're a good time. We're fun. Yeah. You know, we're not, we're not, we, we do dark stuff, but we're not. We are fun. We are, we are fun. All right. Well, yeah. well let's uh, check out the, the darkness in Pete. And 
uh, we checked out Pete. And, yeah, uh, is there a version of Pete out there where he does cross the line? No, 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 no. Absolutely strict. No, it's it's strict because because it actually makes the end of the song e even to me darker because he's like he leans into it. He doesn't cross the line, but he like then he'll he'll pay his his anguish is what they yeah use. his anguish is yeah. yeah. Then, exactly. then you you fade to black. <laughs> okay, gotcha. So let's um we'll talk about uh, another song on there, uh, Giant Monsters. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, is that about Trogdor? It's or not about Trogdor. I do have Trogdor the Burninator on my arm. Um, it's about any giant monster. I I wrote it because one of the first things he and I clicked with as friends was our love of of kaiju films. Yeah. He's a much bigger fan than I am. I'm I'm what? still a novice. <laughs> like like I I I'm especially a fan of the Toho stuff. Right. It, it was a year before I realized that Gamera was not part of the Toho thing. But, yeah, you know, same here. Yeah. But also excellent. Yes. Yeah. And there's and and so I sat down and said I'm I'm gonna write a song about that. So you know again it's gone through permutations and he's he's uh, altered some of the lyrics because he sings it and um, it's my wife calls it an earworm. Mm -hmm. uh, People come to see it say they can't get out of their head for a few days, and um, I, it, it's I, it's kind of one of our signature songs. Uh, you know, he, he and I, we're like, well, we don't always have to play it, but we, we kind of always have to play yeah. it. You know, it's like I, I it's we like were, I, we were playing a set last Sunday, and I said, you know, we don't have to do that. And he goes, yeah, we did, and yeah, he was right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I'm I'm like because it it and, and it's a nice it actually is a nice there's a nice counterbalance between it and and destroy all monsters now because it's it's like. There's there's a bit of a theme and an arc uh, in that, but uh, but yeah, giant monsters just became this, uh, yeah, it's it's an airworm and it's uh, it's been been played on uh, the radio. It's been played, yeah, you know, it's our good for you guys. Yeah, it, it's also it really is also a perfect example of the collaborative process because like the the, the bulk of the song came from Eric, mm -hmm. and he's you know saying and I don't know if he just said you should be singing. It's so like okay. And there's a lead line. I wrote this for you. <laughs> I, there's, a, there's a lead line in it that he assumed I would play. And I said, why don't you do it? You, yeah. you wrote the line. Yeah. And, and it's now a good showcase for, for his, his lead, for his lead yeah, on yeah. the thing. It, and, and we even got, like, I think the one thing we have done, it's not quite a bridge, but there's a little extended part where he gets to play a little bit more, very yeah. tastefully, of course, that they, before it goes back into the last verse. So it's um, a good collaborative uh, effort on that front. Yeah. And he, he improvised, he forgot a lyric one time we were playing it live, and he improvised what is the best line in the entire song, okay. which is uh, uh, Giant Monsters baking that radioactive cake. Yeah. He <laughs> forgot what the actual line was, and <laughs> saying that on stage, I said, keep it. That's it, put that, that one in. That makes, because it makes people, even if they're only half listening, go, did he just say radioactive cake? <laughs> Um, and, no, one, no one's asked me about that. Yeah, but yeah. You know, uh, we both came into this strong. Uh, I was uh, solo. I always felt I was a, a better vocalist than guitarist. I was fine with chords and rhythm. And he came into this uh, more like doing vocals if he had to. Right. He felt more, 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 lead player. Player. more of a lead. Yeah. And uh, he has been nothing but supportive and allowed me to become a m much better guitarist and he has opened up as a vocalist yeah, and so yeah if you see us live there is no like like we trade off leads we yeah, you know we trade off lead vocals it's it's a it's a true musical collaboration yeah, too one of the one of the best things that's happened it's a song we did early on that, that i'd written that um uh it's called serial killer chic and because he plays slide, we just decided to be a slide solo. Yeah, there sure is. And as that song has evolved, the slide solo is now like a big part of it. Right. There was, um, well, the, we were playing a Eagle last Saturday and a friend of his was there. Like, I mean, was it, was it Gonzo's? It was telling us, it was, who's that one? Oh, no, yeah, it was a Gonzo's. Um, so when he's playing the, the slide thing, and the guy comes in and says, did you guys have like a fretless guitar going? That's really cool sound. Like, what the, oh, yeah, no, no it, it was the slide. It was the owner of the place. He was in the back in the kitchen, and and he heard me playing the slide. And I I throw a ton of effects on the slide. Yeah, it's, it's it's like it's this very sonic. It's mm -hmm. like this nightmare slide because the song itself is he wrote based right. on the dead zone. Right. Uh, it was slightly on the dead zone. Yeah. But it's about a serial killer who thinks he's cool, and basically, 
And so I do like these weird. I, I actually now play with two slides: one on this pinky, mm -hmm. doing like weird stuff up here right. with a lot of delay, and then that goes off, and I play regular slide here. And uh, and he came out from the kitchen because he didn't know. He's like, he's like, was that? Because he's a bass player. This this the owner yeah, of this place. Okay. He's a bass player. And he goes, was that a fretless guitar? And I'm like, no, that no, was just that's weird. The, and that's my just, technique. Yeah. That's <laughs> a, uh, there, uh, it was um, Porch Fest not this year, but the year before we played it, and one of the, somebody taped that and put it on, and I was listening to it. Oh, that sounds really. Yeah, it's not, it did sound really cool. It, like, it sounds really cool when there's a lot of open space. So yeah, around yeah. Uh, techniques where you got to turn your back so nobody steals what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, no, it all, you know, honestly, it all comes from uh, David Gilmore live at Pompeii. Oh. Watch, watching him play uh, Saucer Full of Secrets mm -hmm. with all the delay and echo right. with his slide just making noise with the guitar. Mm -hmm. I've always kept that in the back of my head, and I haven't had a lot of chance to use it, and this gave me that chance. Because he said, the weirder you get, the better it is. Uh -huh. And I'm like, you sure I want to play pretty? Yeah. And he's like, no, it's weird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Yeah, I, I, uh, worked. Well, let's um, let's give that uh, serial killer Sheik a listen and uh, check out your slide playing on that. Cool. Nothing, I'm a killing machine. Looking slick and I'm feeling lean. I'm a destination, nothing, I'm a killing machine. Out tonight, it's a one I need. Now make a friend, that's when you bleed. I'm not too old, I'm not past my prime. I'm in no hurry, cause I've got time And I'm looking slick and I'm feeling lean I'm a destination, nothing, I'm a killing machine Looking slick and I'm feeling lean I'm a destination, nothing, I'm a killing machine Slick and I'm feeling lean. I'm a destination, nothing. I'm a killing machine. Looking slick and I'm feeling lean. I'm a destination, nothing. I'm a killing machine. Thank you. And I like um, how you said I, I had one of my songs called Catapult Launch, and I great name. I wanted a, yeah. another element to it, so I asked one of my friends to play. Just I said, just play a solo. Use as much whammy bar as possible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I said, just don't just craziness like Adrian Blue on steroids. And there you he go. sent me three takes, and take one was the best. And That's just, awesome. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, and sometimes noise mm -hmm. is the best thing for it. You yeah. know, I mean, I can try to, you know, like he was saying about Giant Monsters, it's a very tasteful mm -hmm. solo. It's always the same. It's the way I play yeah. it. But sometimes noise, it, it just take, it's it makes the moment. It, right. it, it, it lifts it up so you can improvise it. You know, it's yeah. always different. Yeah. So it brings something uh, Okay, you mentioned Tovo. I got to ask you, uh, minus one, thumbs up. Oh, I yeah. think it should have been up for best picture. Yeah, I, I, I am, I am offended that it was not because I thought, I thought, I've told people like I don't like Godzilla. I'm like, you could take Godzilla out of this movie. It's an outstanding. It's movie. an outstanding. That movie. may, yeah. that may have 
jumped to the top of my favorite Godzilla movies. Yeah, yeah I absolutely. Was, I was, I saw, I've seen it twice. I'd see it again in a heartbeat. Watched it three awesome. times already. The, yeah. the only, I the only the drawback to that movie is mm-hmm. that the Kong and Godzilla movie came out mm-hmm. immediately mm-hmm. after it, mm-hmm. which was fine. Uh-huh. It's a different, it's a different animal altogether. Sure. No pun intended. Literally. Yeah, but. Um, uh, but yeah, Godzilla minus one is just a flat out great movie. Yeah. Where you said you haven't seen the black and white one? Oh, the black and white version of yeah. minus one. I have not seen. No, black neither have I. Wow. Yeah. Okay, I saw that first. Mm. Oh wow! Yeah, 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 yeah. And there are subtleties in that you can catch from the color version, like there's uh, you know, sparks and yeah. things like that. But the black one and white one, I was like, ah, I'm just right back watching Godzilla with a bowl of popcorn. And, yeah. You know, <laughs> You know, a couple of years ago, we went to uh, the Paramount in Aurora, played uh, Gojira, the original mm. Japanese yeah. cut, with, uh, and we went and without Raymond Burr. That, that, without, yes. yeah. <laughs> you know, without that, was, Burr, that yeah. was actually the first time I'd ever seen Gojira. Yeah, well, that's very and, awesome. and, Oh, yeah, and I was like, <laughs> because I, I grew up mm. seeing the one with Raymond Burr thinking right. that was, we, that was yeah. the version. Like, Raymond Burr is Steve Martin. Yes. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I, I actually my first Godzilla movie in the theater was Godzilla nineteen eighty five where they brought him back uh, where they brought back remember yeah so yeah 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 well, we we do love it well let's check out a clip of giant monsters and while we're at it. one two three four <laughs> I want to go and get me some sushi now and some Japanese food. Yeah, oh yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, so now your latest release is Toast. Yeah. And I was, again, I was listening through your stuff this morning as I was getting ready to come out to the studio. And it's it's dark, but it's more human and not so much fantasy dark. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. So are, are these from I'm, personal stories, or is this also... We from literature. Where where do these come from? This actually, you know, it's weird. But we we don't approach these like like concept albums or anything. But we try to thematically select songs that all hang together. Okay. We made Graveyard Party to come out on like Halloween week. Okay. We made Graveyard Party to be a Halloween album, and up until Graveyard Party, we'd been mostly a 
acoustic with a little bit of effects. Yeah. Okay. By the time we got to Toast, I think Toast is better represents what we do live mm -hmm. because uh, we mm -hmm. wanted, it all came from him. He said, let's do a song where all of our songs are in the key of E. Yeah, oh. originally, yeah. Originally, I wanted to call it erratic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because again, the sense of humor. Yeah, and th this is also a good thing. Just shows the collaborative effort. We got to a certain point, and Eric says, "I don't think it's working." And I'm like, "You're absolutely right. We can't. That doesn't as a work title. As just a as title. a title, anymore. right? All the songs are still in E. So yeah. if you're, if you're and we, and a couple of the songs that, that I originally wanted to do, we just took out and put other ones in. Yeah, yeah. And so I think it, we just want, we just wound up selecting uh, the darker songs and leaning into. Uh, a little more production, like uh, a day drinking in particular. Like there's percussion on it, mm -hmm. which we hadn't done, and there's like multiple uh, yeah. gang shouting on it and things like that. And uh, then I did like three guitar overdubs on my part. And Wages of Sin had been very different when we went into the studio. He had stripped it back, which made me have to go and write a whole new like guitar line yeah. for it, which came out so much better now because it's yeah. it's just this. Um, uh, at that same show last week, somebody said, "Yeah, your music would really fit like a like a mid '90s horror indie film." And, and then we both said, "From Dusk Till Dawn," and he's like, "Yeah." And so, and that's yeah. Wages of Sin to me. That's that's the the uh, Lonely Road sort of darkness. Dark well, blues. The, actually, one of my questions I had here was, would you guys consider uh, scoring a Tim Burton movie? Maybe not Tim Burton. Maybe not Tim Burton. We have no. strong opinions about Tim Burton nowadays. Like, like, like how about let's say Tim, Tim, Tim Burton, twenty five. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Like, like something like Mars Attacks. Sure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah Mars Attacks. Mars years. Attacks. Like, Ed Wood. Sure. Anything like, like that. Planet of the Apes and Beyond. No, thank you. <laughs> but that's yeah, that's just like, us. Like, yeah. No offense if you like Tim yeah. Burton stuff. Right. Um, Robert Robert Rodriguez. Robert Rodriguez. Yeah. Quentin Tarantino for sure. Okay. And any of those like any of those indie. I'd love to score a Nick Cage movie, oh, a Nicolas Cage movie, you know, like Red Rocks West you know what was or something like that. A good combination was Scorsese's. Nick Cage was playing a, um, a an ambulance driver who couldn't sleep. I Bring out your dead. Yeah, 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 yeah. That movie has got one of the best soundtracks, and it's like I was just going nuts because set in yeah. New York in the seventies. Right, right. Yeah, so something all like the music that. are playing, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, ab absolutely. I would. That would. That would be great. I'd love to yeah. score something like that, or just have them use our songs. Yeah. Our sync licensing is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So you bring a lot of. Um, when I saw you play live, uh, elements of you know, like you said, you know, slide and tremolo and all that. I mean, how, how do you guys prepare for a show? How do you set up? How do you set up a set list? Let's say. Uh, we've got. That's a great question. That's uh, it's, it's a hard question now because like. We, we, as we mentioned, there's certain songs that we kind of feel like we have to play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when we juggle things around, it's kind of within. just a matter where they fall. Yeah. 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 First, we look at the venue. All right. Are we playing with you know how long is the set? Yeah. If it's a three hour set, we have to play everything. Yeah. Right. Uh, and and actually, at a three hour set like the other night, we actually have to like do a couple of solo numbers at the top of one of the sets. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, just because for time to stretch them out. To stretch them out. Yeah. So we're about we're about four songs away from having three solid hours. All right. Yeah. Um, and, and there are songs we, we used to do we could bring back, but we hadn't rehearsed them for a while. And we rehearse a lot. Mm -hmm. We play, we, we practice a lot. He's a he's a, uh, a rehearsal nut. Like, yeah. he likes to warm up. He likes to practice. Um, Typical and, guitarist. You know, yeah, no, no. He's <laughs> like, no, and, and, and honestly, it's not even just about the guitar. To me, it's about, I know so many bands that, that half-ass it. Yeah, they come up cold. And, yeah. yeah, they come up cold and they're like, oh, yeah, well, no. I'll, I'll be warmed up by the third yeah. song. Don't worry about and, it. And, it, and for me, it's still because we're we're tight enough that we can, if we want to, we can go boom, boom, boom. And I and I like a band that can do that when they yeah. need to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a lot of a set always comes down to: Are we playing with other bands? Are these other bands going to bring in people who've never seen us before? And if that's the case, we we got to play. Got to play the hot right. hot thirty, hot forty five. Yeah. Like Porch Fest is a perfect example. It's not a time to try out new material. Right. It's not a you know unless unless we really think it's going to work. Okay. And yeah, but um, so uh, so the, it just comes down to how long do we have to play, right? Um, and then you know if we're doing like an hour or two hours, that's when we can start having a little more fun and playing the deeper cuts, as Mr. Vince yeah. calls them, right. the deep cuts. And the other thing about practice is, you know, we're not young, right. like so. 
like I you, forget the songs. Secret is out. We are yeah, not yeah, we're not young kids. I don't know if you guys are. Yeah, um, I was gonna say seasoned <clears throat> musicians, yeah. which which helps because you know it doesn't take a ton of practice to get back on. Mm-hmm. on but but even like we usually take November and December off because we both have day jobs that kind of require that. Okay. When we come back in January, we have to relearn a couple of things that yeah. we play all the time mm-hmm. and. Um, Every once in a while, I, there was one time we had a stretch, maybe it was a few weeks, or, and we says, and I'm like, wait, how's this going? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's yeah. very rare. I'm like, and that, and how do I not remember this song that I wrote? Right. It can be the song you wrote, or the, it, it definitely happens when you didn't write the song. When it when, yeah. it, when it's like a chord progression he came up with, and like we've got this song called um, uh, "Get Out of My Tomb," which is a whole story in itself. Oh, yeah, itself. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, like, I, he'll. He'll start playing. I'll be like, "Oh yeah, right." And like, you, if you're watching me on stage, you'll actually see my face go, "Oh right." Yeah. Oh, yeah. Even though we practiced it an hour before yeah. the show, right. you know. So well, there was the the story of like hearing about the Stones getting ready for a tour, sure. and then getting together after you know half a year or whatever, and they throwing on a CD and listening and yeah, start playing along to the CD. And this sure. is this is the Rolling Stones. Really, isn't it? <laughs> we've got we've got a, we've got a Dropbox folder that has all of our demos and all of our songs in it. Right. And if we need to revisit anything, we can. Yeah. I heard about that with the Kinks when the Pretenders mm. made "Stop Your Sobbing" a hit. Okay, the Kinks had to go back and, and relearn the song. <laughs> yeah. How did we do this? Yeah. And we, for a long time, we sat mm-hmm. on stools at most of our gigs and yeah. had music stands. Right, and I. Hate having music stands, and it's uh, there's plenty of people who do it, and or they mm-hmm. have a yeah. they have a, yeah, and it happens. For for me, it's a it's a personal point of pride right. to try to remember things, and mm-hmm. practice helps yeah. that. Right. I'm gonna be doing. I got hired to do it like a solo birthday party thing here next month, and I'm gonna have to have my, the music in front of me. Right. Um, but there's something about being able to just jump up, plug in, and go. And go right. That, um, I, I take pride in it. And, yeah. and the fact that we practice so much and play enough out that we're really tight as men. I'm really very tight. glad because I was willing to to lean a little bit like, oh, we can have the stance. And when we when Eric kind of said we should get away from that, I'm really glad we did that. Especially because I, I used to be like, we're doing three hours, man. I got, I'm got i going to need to know yeah, how to play no, that. I mean, and we don't work past right. that. And, and, and no, please, no, no, uh, no shame to anybody who does use those. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. it, you, you know... That's fine. It's yeah. just for for me and for for us. I think we want to be more rock and roll than folk. Right. Yeah. And I was a folk guy. I was a sort of a pop folk solo guy. Okay. And the more and to me, just getting up, jumping around, getting off the stools, and and bouncing around yeah. is a little more rock and roll. To yeah. Me. yeah. Well, I mean, I just make a, a rule that uh, unless the situation like um, carries. There's no room up there, so I have to sit, <laughs> oh I have to sit down. Yeah, yeah. I have to sit down at that stage. But um, it's such a great venue. You can by actually, way. I love I, that place. I love Carrie's, but I don't know how you could even sit down up there if you're I, just solo. I, yeah, I but put my chair all the way in the corner. Oh, yeah, and sure. actually, I do set up my mic stand kind of like this. I did too. So it's I had to off too. Yeah. to the side. And yeah. it, it, I need to get a new mic stand for that place because, like, <laughs> my mic stand will only work as an idea. Try to do it on the side. Oh, yeah, our good. our mic stands are all duct taped, and it's like a, <laughs> we do like like we do. We walk in, we've got we've got all our stuff. It's all stickered up. Everything looks beat up, and uh, yeah, being yeah. road dogs, so absolutely, road, road wear, absolutely. You know? But um, I was gonna say, yeah. So now we, I stand up all the time because also yeah. it's better for the diaphragm and for singing. You burn more um, calories too. If I'm doing yeah. if I'm doing a, an, a, a, an original show, absolutely no. Yeah, it's got to be all coming from here yeah. and from my heart, you know. Uh, but I'm doing three hours at a, a group of, and you know, I've got 700 songs sure, on my yeah. iPad. If somebody requests an odd one, they go, "Hey, let me during the break, let me go over it again, and that, I'll that's, play it next set." You know? That was one of the other things. Is one of one of the things is if you have a uh, 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 a music stand like that, and people are more inclined to come up and request, right. cover, and we just. We don't do requests. Unless you're requesting our stuff, we just don't do it. It's just not who we are. And, and happily, it doesn't really happen. I remember the one like the mantra. Every stuff. once in a while, yeah. somebody will come up and say something, but you know, it's yeah. not real often. It, like, interestingly enough, at Carrie's, the last time we were there, we did have people come to the stage, but it wasn't to request. Like, one guy wanted to hear a song that we played in the first set, okay. which was like a tremendous <laughs> ego. Which was very like, cool, yes. yeah. And then there was the, the weirdest one was the, uh, also at Carrie's. This woman comes up and she starts like sort of talking. We couldn't hear 
in the middle of the song, not yeah. like in a break. Like we're playing, and she's standing there, you know, down there. Because yeah. Carrie says, if you guys haven't been there, it's, it's very, it's a very high stage. You have to yeah. climb up on a radiator to get onto <laughs> yeah. it. And she's standing down there, just sort of talking. Yeah, and and I'm like. Yeah, I thought and I look over at him, and he looks at me. Uh, uh. And then she came back after the show. It turned out she just wanted to talk about his cool guitar. She's like, <laughs> what is that guitar you've got? I'm like, it's a goat. Yeah. I've never heard of a goat. I'm like, well, let's talk I'm, about guitars. Now you have. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a awesome. I'm big goat fan. I listen. You're, 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 you're a 12-string well. sure goat. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. So, um, okay, so we're talking about some of the places you played. You love carries. Yeah. Uh, what's your spot for Indian food on Devon? Uh, and so far, it's been we've we played well, Carrie's twice. It's called Nan on Devon and yeah, four hours down right next door. Love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. get the chicken sixty five. Oh, is that good? I oh, haven't yeah. had that. Oh, I've had, I've had the tandoori good. chicken. I've had the chicken korma I, there. I had the chicken biryani. It's the best chicken biryani. Yeah. And they're they're non. I mean, oh, lives okay. up to their name. Yeah, and it's it's much better. There's a family place across the street called Usamia. Yeah. 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 Stick with Nan on Devon. Oh, okay, great, great. Thank, Thank you for the. You know the one thing I've thought about. You're gonna get an Indian food. Last time we played there, I walked down the street. And I was walking a friend of mine back to her car, and yeah. there were places that it was eleven o'clock and they were still open. I'm like, oh yeah, well, I could go get Indian food at eleven o'clock at yeah. night. I, bet, I, I, I would hear love that house. <laughs> and the oh. summertime is amazing outside oh. there. Yeah, that's that. You know, so what? Any, I'm sure you know. You know, after a gig, usually you wind up at a Mexican place. Right. You know, having a burrito mm-hmm. or some late night tacos yeah. or a taqueria. Yeah. But having having uh, a uh, late night Indian Middle Eastern or Indian awesome. option is yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, well, next time. Let me ask you guys: what, what are some of your favorite places to play in the well, you know, southern Wisconsin, northern Illinois area? Now, uh, Carries is quickly becoming one because the crowd there is really good. Yeah, they're very we, receptive. That's they're yeah. very receptive. Um, great vibe, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I like the vibe about it, and you know, the, 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 we made friends with the bartender right away when, yeah. when we yeah. when he found out we like Malort. And <laughs> we we should discuss Malort at some point. Okay. Probably, um, we're still trying to get them to sponsor us. This one. <laughs> we got a lot of affection for Phyllis's. Phyllis's, we've been yeah. playing, they, we they do they always a, welcome us there. Yeah, we do. A, we do. Uh, we've been calling it League Night, um, and we so they give us the evening, and then we bring in a couple other artists to play with us, and it's generally once a month. Sometimes we go a couple of month gap, but um, they, which is so funny, because Clem who owns it who's also a musician, uh, he has rarely actually stayed to watch us, but he loves us. Okay. Phyllis's, is, it's one of those places where um, when I first started doing uh, solo music about 12 years ago, I was told, play Phyllis's and then get out. But I love it. I never feel more like a musician than when I'm like at Phyllis's because there's, they don't have a crowd. Mm-hmm. Like, so people just wander in from other places. That's good. And yeah. if, you can, if you can hook them, and then they hang out, and they're already half in the bag, so <laughs> which is good, which is great. So, uh, and we have had great nights there. We have had uh, we've had ant nights. We've had meh nights. So the, the the biggest ant night was there was a Bears game uh, in Chicago, being broadcast. So like yeah. we get there, we're getting ready to play, and we didn't we had I think we went on at ten thirty wait for the yeah. game to finish. Mm-hmm. Or those times when there's a basketball game going on and or people are watching anything, the, yeah. and they're watching that <laughs> instead of us. Yeah, like I know the set they'll just go, whoa! Oh, no, not us. Yeah. Then of course the uh, the best part of the playing Phil's is of going next door to Smoke Daddy and getting barbecue before yeah, the show. Yeah, so awesome. Yeah, you gotta associate every room mm-hmm. with some yeah. kind of meal and post game. And then uh, I think one of the best venues anybody can play in the city is Gallery Cabaret, hands yeah. down. It's just such a cool room to play. Yeah. Uh, another another place that has great history. Okay. I mean, yeah. he and I both played there years before. You know, I, I remember playing there when the neighborhood was still sketchy too. Okay. Yeah. So. And then Montrose Saloon, we play. Montrose yeah. Saloon is a great room. Yeah, I'm working on trying to get Eric over here. So. Oh, <laughs> but he'd be great yeah. on here. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. With all the music he's done mm-hmm. and we're part of. Yeah. I, the vibe. There's another one where the vibe there is just. Fantastic! Mm-hmm. They love they love music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, even during COVID, mm-hmm. they had music out in the yard. Yeah, yeah. So, and, Early on, yeah. I did a solo show there, and then we did just before the open. We did one of our, our an outdoor thing. Mm-hmm. It was one of those things where I'm thinking, oh, it's going to be a nice spring day. It was cold as hell. It was both freezing. Our coats could, there's right. pictures of it. We're, we were in under the tent. There was a heater in the tent, yeah. and we had our coats on. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and then. Um, 
We play at O's Tap, which yeah. is which is a newer venue for live music. Not not newer, but it, it hasn't been around a ton right. for, for a real long time. But I do want to plug this place we just played last Sunday. What's that? Which is called Reed's Local. Okay, where's that? Is, it's over in Belmont. It's a couple, It's a few blocks, like three or four blocks away from Kuma's Corner. Oh, yeah. Okay. So it's it's on that end of, of Belmont. And they are such a cool little place. Mm. The, 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 the couple that own it, he's a former touring, touring musician. Okay. Um, and they've just got. Uh, we played with a couple of really cool, uh, like one yeah. band who was who was touring called After Birth Cartoons, who were touring from Phoenix, and uh, we just through emails I managed to link up with them. Yeah. Um, but it's a really cool little space, yeah. uh, it, and they've and they've got an inbuilt audience who likes music. Yeah. It, it, it was once well, it's got one foot definitely in the neighborhood bar, but the area for performing is actually comfortable if you're not just completely crammed yeah. into a corner. I mean, like the old beat kitchen style where it's a bar in front, you got to go all the way yeah, to the right. It, it, yeah, it's it like, it was like up, and it was, yeah, it was a very pleasant, yeah. pleasant cool. experience. Very cool. And then I, I think one of the things, especially being out in the suburbs, about playing in the city, because we, people out, you know, since we're, I'm from Aurora, he's from Naperville, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're kids of the burbs. We spend way more time in Chicago because it is hard to get booked in the suburbs if you're not a cover band. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's, uh, like, we would, we used to, you'd have to lean into the coffee house thing, uh, and mm -hmm. those are getting fewer and further between. Right. Uh, and then we sort of peddled and amped our way out of the coffee house scene because we can't really do what yeah. we do anymore. You unplugged. We're, league. we're, a, we, unplugged league. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we really are like a dive bar band. And, yeah. you know, I, I, we, I, we always joke about Malort, but we, we started sort of like leaning to the more thing and tagging them in Instagram photos. Yeah. Carl Jepsen follows us on Facebook, the guy yeah. who owns the company. Yeah. So they do... Because it's a Chica yeah. because it was a Chica Chicago thing, so I always made sure like we would take pictures with the tamale guy, right. you know, things like that, just to, to make part of our identity being Chicago. Mm -hmm. To be fair, we actually have learned to like more. We like, we've learned it's, to like more. I mean, it's yeah. still a funky taste, but the, it is, the more you have it, the less... We're not, uh, not we're never going to claim it's good, right. Well, but, but you guys are way ahead of me, though. Yeah, <laughs> I'm still not near. But they're, they're, for one of the earlier sh league shows, months we were coming out of COVID, mm -hmm. there were pictures online of us doing the first shots of Malort, <laughs> and I had the best face where it was that demo. Yeah, oh, oh, oh my goodness, <laughs> what is that? Um, I I have tried to create something I called the unholy trinity, which is a shot of Malort, a shot of Jägermeister, and then either PBR or old style. Yeah. One of the two, or Miller, I don't well, know. You did the, we yeah, were Miller, in one place Milwaukee, where you did the so. mix of Jaeger and Malort in one. Yeah, it was, I did do that, wow. yeah. And uh, you're very, that was a, did that you was a, finish that? I did finish it. It was, uh, it made the bartender almost wretch, but it was awesome. Oh, you, Goldschlager, oh, Malort, there you go. and Jaeger, there's your holy oh. trinity right there. Whoa. <laughs> let's, let's or or Rumpelman's. Let's try that Thursday. Okay. No, no. We're, <laughs> Rumble, Rumble, Rumble Mints is the devil's. That's like uh, you write a song about it, it's, it's or make like, it lime Rumble Mints to make it even more disgusting. Oh, so it's I, mint, I minty. Li I've had that it's minty lime. lime. Oh, my goodness. We haven't done this in the league, but when I was in a band, uh, we, were, we were in a place in Ohio. All right. We did pickleback. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> one, one time. That was yeah. something else. Okay, mm -hmm. we're not, now we get drunken space. Yeah, we're, now we're getting the booze talk. So yeah. let's. Uh, um, oh. Ask you now. Now that we've kind of gone through and talked a little bit, I want to talk a little bit uh, some Chicago stuff and uh, your influences. And we're going to go real quick back and forth. Yeah. Your musical Mount Rushmore. Ooh. You first. All right. Uh, <laughs> then we'll just bounce back and forth. I'd say, in terms of league, uh, Warren Zevon. Okay. Warren Zevon. Uh, okay. Tom Waits. Oh, go back oh, and forth. Let's go back and forth. It make it easier. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tom Waits. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tom Waits. Uh, Indigo Girls, actually. Indigo Girls, yeah. okay. They take it up one spot or two? The one, just the one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Lemmy. Lemmy, wow, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> I was talking to a friend last night, and he's like, oh, it'll be hard for me to decide. I go, okay, you got Neil Peart and Lemmy. you got two spots to fill. <laughs> Who else are you going to put in there? Yeah. Um, uh, I'll let you have them. I. It's huge. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, you go take another one. Bob Dylan. Okay. Because uh, yeah, Tom Waits is one of mine too. Um, I'll fine. say I'll say the Cramps because finding the Cramps has helped inform what the league is to me. Yeah. Okay. 
And, 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 the, and the, the, the Cramps and Lemmy to me kind of once you realize that Lemmy was is more, has always been a more rock and roll than just like a heavy guy. Right. So it's, it's, it sort of led me into yeah. kind of Cramps like that. Um, said Dylan. Um, Tom Waits. You said. It's hard to pick one blues guy. I'd probably have to go with Muddy Waters because that was what really got me into the blues. But in, like in the last few years, it's been John Lee Hooker. Right. Because I, I got a little bit more in common with John Lee Hooker vocally than I did Muddy. Muddy because yeah. Muddy had soul. And John Lee Hooker was just. Uh. Well, it was. Um, he used to uh, you know, work from the '80s in Chicago and '90s. He used to hang out at Exit a little yeah. bit, and uh, yeah. the, old, the old one on, on Wells. On Wells. Yeah. And uh, one thing we'd notice is like. The rock guys like Motorhead, the punk guys like Motorhead, and the, the new wave guys yeah. like Motorhead. Yeah. It's like that's one crosses every every yeah. genre. And I'm gonna my, my final one. I'm gonna have to go since I, I was such an '80s pop kid. Okay. I mean, it's it's what I grew up with. I didn't really discover punk until I was 40. All right. Um, but my biggest influence growing up at that point was Brian Adams, like yeah. the songwriting Brian Adams. I, yeah. I loved. His, especially, and even now, even with league songs, we do. There's a there's a song called we do called "Sleeping with My Launch On," which is not in any way a Brian Adams song, but the structure is. Yeah. Like like it is, I can I can see the Brian Adams DNA in there. Yeah. There's a actually one of my favorite songs by him, and believe it or not, he sings it with uh, Sporty Spice. I know that song. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. What a great yeah. melody. When you're and gone, I love what, that song. What a great hooks it, in that it's song. a great song. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we're gonna go into some Chicago questions. Um, go to place for pizza. Oh. I'm going to say Giordano's. Okay. We have to be careful because we play at some pizza places. <laughs> in, in Chicago. In Chicago. In Chicago. In Chicago. Cause, cause yeah. Gonzo's is in sandwich is great. But, uh, yeah, we, we but play it's there, not but in Chicago. Food, but yeah. it's not in Chicago. Um, well, what's the place you used to Ramon, Romano's. Yeah, Romano's out, out in North Aurora. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was. Great pizza. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, what's the place? It was Kitty Corner from Julius Meinl. I can't think of it. I want to say it was. It was a. It was a little family place. Gaetano. Guy, something like that. You know what the other good is? It's got the whale in it. Ah, I can't remember the name of the place now. Uh, I'm a south side guy, so yeah. I just, like, I, nice honestly, we. I don't. I don't eat pizza in the city a lot. I yeah. definitely. I could. I could tell you the Mexican places we oh. stop. <laughs> uh, okay. Or the. Or the. Well, or, have at it. We're uh, good. There. I can't even think of the name of the place, but we used to play a place uh, on. Um, yeah. The, what that was, was a favorite. That, what, that was was the of, what was the name of the street, Tom? It was on, it's on Irving Park. Irving Park. We used to play a place called uh, Pub OK, which is yeah. no longer there. It was a it was a Polish bar. And uh, down, you had to wait until 2.30 to get paid because you got a, a cut of the entire evening oh, was how oh. it worked. Well, so we, we would thing. finish we would finish up at midnight and have, so and we would walk down the street to this. Go for dinner. And 24, yeah, 24-hour Mexican place. I can't think of the name of it. It's, a, it's on Irving Park. Um, but uh, oh. they served enormous portions, yeah. like to the point where you're like, are, are they serving us like For illegal meat? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's one of those things like you know, you, you hold you, you, it's that late at night, you're really hungry, so you think I'm going to want to have all this food, right? And yeah, then that's you're a hungry. bad idea. <laughs> yeah, you, you, yeah, well, <laughs> it's great leftovers. Oh, yeah, yeah. sure. And I am, I am sad that the Hollywood Grill no longer is 24 hours. Yeah. They only do like, like once COVID broke that because that was a great place to just wander into. Mm -hmm. And have a Tom Waits evening at two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. You know. Night Nighthawks kind of Nighthawks yeah. at the diner, absolutely. All yeah. right, okay, Sears Tower or John Hancock? For view of the city. Sears. I'd Sears, yeah. Okay. I'm not calling it Wills. Neither one. Uh White Sox or Cubs? Oh Cubs. I grew up it was my grandmother's big thing. I'm not really a sports guy, but I'm gonna go with the Cubs because that's like a family tradition. But one, uh, yeah. of the, one of the saddest things I think is my father did not live to see the Cubs win the yeah. World Series, and he even said that when he was. He was, he was say, I may never see them win the World Series, and unfortunately, he didn't. So, I played a solo show at. It was called Julia. It's still called Julia's Mountain. I think it's on Southport. Okay. I forget. Yeah. But it's right there, uh -huh. and it was the opening weekend <laughs> you, of, of the World Series yeah. you or remember, the playoffs. You remember the, the one um, early. League show that we played at that the Sandlot. We played the Sandlot. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and there was a Cubs game. There, and, yeah. and, and we, we had to wait for them to open up the street, to be able to park and go into the bar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if they're doing music anymore. Now. Yeah, I don't, nah. uh, it didn't work out that well. And, uh, they certainly didn't keep it because of us. Yeah. <laughs> and I like to end end the interview with a kind of a little bit of a fun thing. Yeah. Uh, would you rather question? Sure. Pick a number from one to ten. Six. Nine. Would you rather 
have only breakfast foods or dinner foods for the rest of your life? Breakfast food. Why is it? I don't know. I just, uh, uh, first of all, breakfast for dinner is awesome, which means that I could do a sausage pancakes, French toast especially. I'm a French toast guy as opposed yeah. to the, the other two options. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, breakfast food, I think, uh, especially if you expand that out to like Mexican breakfast sure. or like a, like a yeah, or, or an Irish breakfast or something yeah. like that. They, you got a lot, got a lot of options. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a real, I don't have a lot of rules about yeah. food, about my, like when to eat it. Cause I, I'll tell somebody I'm having something cause cold pizza is always the best breakfast. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, yeah. Oh, for me, breakfast food. I think it's have uh, you know something with hollandaise sauce on it. Oh yeah, you know, some all Benedict, the, yeah, all yeah. type of Benedicts. Yeah, there's a uh, uh, my go-to pizza place is uh, Palermo's on 63rd and Hamlin. Oh okay, I know that name. Yeah. And uh, you got to know them on uh, 95th Street, 95th and Cicero, but they have a sweet sauce, so it's perfect for breakfast pizza. Oh, that's yeah. awesome! Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so you said nine. Yes, he did. Okay. Would you rather be forced to sing along to every song you hear or dance to every song you hear? Every song? Every song. I'm going to say sing along. Okay, why is that? Because I can do that in my car, I can do that walking down the street, I can do that in my living room, and there's just some places I ain't going to dance. Yeah. Yeah. If you're compelled by a curse to dance, <laughs> yes. dance yeah. every time, you'd have to stop your car in the expressway. Yeah. And also, Gotta dance. there's just certain songs you can't dance to them. Oh, here's Close to the Edge by Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm not dancing to that. Right. <laughs> what was that? There was somebody put a meme together of uh, uh, bad songs to, for strippers to dance to, and they're all like, oh, <laughs> Rack of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Oh, my God. How does it's put good to know ya? Whoa. I would pay good money to see that. To see a, a stripper strip to the record. First of all, the song is long. 50 minutes yeah. long. I... By the way, I can, that is one of the few covers I can play at any given moment. You could hand me guitar now, and I can do that song, that song word for word. It's in my iPad, and I've yeah. it requested twice. I, I love it. I, I, also, I did it on the day he passed. I had oh, yeah, me too. I yeah. gig, gig that day, so I was like, yeah, yeah. You know, I got it. Sorry, guys, I got to play this. I was lucky enough to see him once. Oh, I got, really? to, I got to see him. My, my dad dad called me sometime in the, in the mid-'90s. He had a date that fell through, and he's like, hey, you want to go see Gordon Lightfoot tonight and, at the yeah. Holiday Star? I'm like, yeah. And that guy took requests. That guy, like, really? at, 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 yeah, at, at, at Ooh, intermission, right. you could just go and drop a piece of paper on the stage. I mean, generally, his songs were the, what they were requesting right. at that point. Right. But, well, uh, my favorite Gordon Lightfoot album is the Sundown album. Yeah. Yeah. Everything on there is just fantastic. Yeah. Oh. And, and that documentary they did a few years ago, I think it's on Netflix or Hulu or something. It, it was Dylan's favorite songwriter. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So, okay, well, um, you guys have a huge social media presence. Oh, yeah. Where, where can we find you? Uh, well, wherever. I'd say the best place to find us is just go to theleagueofericks.com. Okay. Uh, the is in there, so it's theleagueofericks.com. Yes. And no it's, spaces, it, no dashes, no just the. You know, space, of just okay. the League of Erics. With a C, by the way. Yeah. Anybody with a K is the devil. That's okay. <laughs> it, you're fine, but you know. Um, we want to get. We want to make that straight right away. Yeah. E R I C. E R I C. So it's theleagueofericks.com, and it's basically a link tree page with links to okay. Instagram, which is probably our, our big social hub. Yeah. Every, that feeds out into everything. We do have a TikTok presence, uh, but again, Instagram. We put all the videos up there, and we do little one minute documentaries of everything we do and, and things like that. And uh, there's Facebooks for you, for you old people. Facebook, yeah. <laughs> Facebook is there. I, I, I only say that because a couple of days ago I found I, I found out from my niece and nephews that that's yeah. <laughs> that's where the old people. Yeah, are it's where it's where the old people hang now. I, I still have a Hotmail account that I use regularly. Yeah, so I still got a yeah. Yahoo account. Yeah, yeah, an old Yahoo account. Um, we're not on MySpace. That's mm -hmm. about the only place we're not. Yeah. So. What was she, <laughs> can, I, can I tell you something? Can I tell you something funny about MySpace real quick? Yeah. My my son is also a musician, and he is getting a lot of traction because he is making. There's a nostalgic movement for MySpace deathcore, metal. Wow. Okay. And they call it MySpace deathcore. So it's like twenty year old music that people used to put on MySpace. Uh -huh. And so he's created a, a, a track, and it, he's getting traction. Like, in four days, he's gotten, like, all these, like, Instagram followers because it's called MySpace Deathcore. And I'm like, <laughs> all right, man, whatever. Yeah. Well, what, what Should we work up that Deathcore song we've been talking about? Finally, yes. Yeah. So you you got you got an avenue for it now then, too. Absolutely. 
Well, guys, thank you so much. This was so much fun. Thank, thank you. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I know you guys got a gig to get to, so. Yes, we do. It's the life of a musician. Yep. Bremen Cafe in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Hi, this is Mark from the Chicago Music Guide, Sounds of Chicago podcast. If you really enjoyed what we're doing here and you want to be a part of it, you want to be on the Chicago Music Guide podcast, you can contact us at our email address, dkelly at chicagomusicguide.com. We look forward to hearing from you because we're going to have a lot of special guests and we want you to be a part of it.